Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks so much for watching the channel, we really appreciate it. The Nintendo Switch has built a reputation as a console of ports. There are an abundance of them and whatever you might think about that situation, there's no doubt that THQ have been doing that really well. Darksiders, the one mastered edition, was most certainly porting done right. With multiple options for graphics including a performance and quality mode, smooth visuals and equally consistent gameplay in handheld mode. 2015's Darksiders 2 The Definitive Edition should be absolutely fine then surely? Well, let's find out. Running in parallel with the story from the first game, I found the characters and settings more compelling than that title. Taking control of the Reaper himself, the snake-tongued brother to war, and one of the four horsemen, you set off to try and redeem your kin. War is up the creek without an apocalypse, and it's your job to try and bring him back. How exactly? Well, storing humanity, so uh, nothing too tricky. As ever, the characters you'll meet along the way are excellently narrated, and I really enjoyed the story on offer. It made sense and was clear from the get-go what you were doing and why. So many of these games cram every sentence with meaningless nonsense, you end up scratching your head wondering what on earth's going on, but that's not the case here. Much like the inspirations, Zelda and God of War, much of the game is centered around the combat. Here you have your light and heavy attacks as well as the aerial variety. At times you'll be timing a dodge roll to unleash counters and a contextual menu may pop up offering you a devastating finisher. My first issue with the game arises around that combat. While I enjoy the tried and true system of attacking, dodge timing and countering, I felt like the control implementation could use some tweaking or at least some options to improve the experience. Let me explain. Take for example the lock on with the LZ button, by holding it you do just that and tapping the right stick will then change the active target. That's fine, however your abilities and skills are tied to a combination of the LB button and one of the face ones. If they'd allowed you to set the target into toggled then this wouldn't have been an issue, but they don't. It means that holding LZ, moving the left thumb stick, still using the RB and RZ to attack and then having to press LB and face buttons, A, B, X and Y all at the same time in some kind of crab motion, you invariably just end up abandoning the lock on altogether so that you can use your skills, meaning that you haven't really got a clue what you're aiming at when you're supposed to be using a skill. I found it surprisingly and obviously an issue, but haven't really heard of that anywhere else before. So either everyone else is much better at finger gymnastics than I am, or it just got missed. I don't know, maybe you decide. The combat itself is as visceral and satisfying as it is bloody and gruesome. Limbs will be confetti on the screen, and when you unlock those dual wielding pistols, you'll be Lara crofting your way through the smaller enemies. You will be finding potions and vials to restore your power source that can be quickly used during combat with a d-pad press. One more button to enjoy. My favourite improvement and the biggest one in Darksiders 2 over the first game is the world itself. Now funnily enough, someone mentioned whether I thought we might see Shadows of Mordor on the Switch, and in actual fact Darksiders 2's world reminds me a lot of that game. You will have the overworld map allowing for fast travel between areas you've visited, but there are dungeons littered throughout it that take on a more traditional Zelda-like experience. Find the map within them, discover a load of treasure, and then potentially beat a boss, solve a few environmental puzzles along the way. When out in the wilderness, you'll be riding on your trusty steed, the pale horse himself, Despair. And while it's easy enough to summon the horse, you can't actually use him everywhere. I felt that the main character's run was just a touch too slow for my liking. As you would expect, the usual array of climbing abilities with some new tricks are here, and these allow for the quick and easy verticality we're used to. While many state Zelda was inspirational for Darksiders, and I'm sure it was, I wouldn't be surprised if when they were making Breath of the Wild, particularly the shrines, they didn't look back at games like Darksiders. The physics-based simple puzzles within them bear a real similarity. Thankfully, not only can you unlock the maps of each dungeon, but you can ask your raven for help. By holding in the left analog stick, you can tell him to show you the way which comes in very handy at times, but wasn't always entirely accurate. The RPG elements of the game are more fleshed out. Story quests, as well as optional side questing, is here and it's tracked. I really enjoy the supporting cast of characters, who will sell you a range of magical paraphernalia, weapons and items throughout your quest. You can also pick up new gear and apparel to deck out death, and these can be compared to old gear and swapped in and out quickly by holding minus on the controller when standing over them. Again, a big improvement over the original game, 
and in my opinion, the frequency of the loot makes this aspect far more compelling. You can learn new attacks and movement combos, but if you're the button mashing type, you might want to at least learn the timing for counter dodging, because I found, early on at least, that I was taking one too many dirt naps. Overall then, I prefer the open world style of gameplay for the series. Having more freedom suits the gameplay, and the looting and exploration feel improved. Combat feels a touch finickety at times, when trying to juggle so many commands, forcing an awkward claw-like grip to execute special attacks, but it still, in my opinion, feels better than the similar offerings that I've played. Another control issue I came across that is a perhaps bigger deal was the camera input speed and control. It seems to be tied in some way to frame rate, and as I'll discuss in the next section, that can vary a lot. In some areas, a touch of the right stick moves the camera a little, and it is sluggish, while in others it flies across the screen like a bat out of hell. In fact, there are comparatively very few tweakable options at all in this version. It feels a touch lacking. I'm that guy who goes to the options screen before they even starts the game to check what's available. Things like the camera speed, which aren't here, motion controls, which are also lacking, and just a range of other options which just don't seem to be here like toggling rather than clicking. It gives an idea, albeit a small one, on the amount of work they've put into this port when it comes to Switch specific features, and I would say it's bare bones. Gameplay is by the numbers at times, but overall very solid and I did enjoy it. I'd say that that scores 17 out of 20. While the controls were decent, but lack the customization and smart toggles that I would expect from a definitive edition. They get 13 out of 20. And don't get me started on the accidental horse summon press dialogue during combat. Now if you caught my review of the first title on Switch, you'll know what a stellar job they did in terms of the overall performance. Not the case here, unfortunately. Now I'm going to make a prediction. If you watch another review and they say the performance is decent and it hovers around 30 frames per second, you gotta call them out on it because they haven't played past the first hour. Seriously, the initial ice area is generally decent and it ran okay. However, upon entering the open world later in the game, performance begins to tank at times. You can literally see the game dynamically downscale the resolution to such a low degree that if you have a TV from this decade, you're going to be weeping at the image that it's producing. Conversely, when entering smaller spaces, it's going to jump back up in clarity, but also frame rate to the expected 30, the same as the other systems. But the strange inconsistencies in camera movement are a real problem for me. Another gripe from a visual perspective are the lack of options. In the previous game, you had performance mode, but not so much here. There are times where the visuals look solid and the improved lighting seems to be intact on the Switch. I always favor frame rate over visuals though, and in an action game like this, it feels essential. If you're used to those slick 60s on your PlayStation or PC, see, then it's going to be missed. It's certainly not a bad game in all areas visually, and as mentioned, the visual character customization is far deeper than before. It certainly needs a patch to try and squeeze some more juice from the Switch hardware. And when you have games like The Witcher 3 looking and running smoother, you don't have a great deal of room for discussion in that regard. The wonderful musical score from the legendary Jesper Kidd, or Jesper Kidd, is as good as you would expect. Epic is the word to describe it, and it ties everything together really well. I love the grandiose nature of it, which interestingly with the wrong backdrop, it just wouldn't have worked. It would have felt forced, but in this world, it's entirely believable. Characters are excellently voiced and the designs on these equally impressive. The Reaper. It's about time you came. Being a bit of a Lord of the Rings nerd, there are smacks of Tolkien in the world design and characters, particularly those dwarf-like makers. They're excellent. Visually, the game currently isn't quite where it needs to be. Performance in the interiors is okay as I've mentioned, but when you step out into the big wide world, expect those slowdowns. Handheld mode suffers even more when it comes to those larger areas, but due to the smaller screen size, it's not quite as noticeable. Overall for me, the visuals as they stand on Switch score 13 out of 20. Audio, on the other hand, is incredible in every regard and scores 19 out of 20. The game costs £25.99, €29.99 or $29.99. Interestingly, this is dropping a pound cheaper than the first game in the UK, and as you would expect, there is a physical copy available as well, and this will undoubtedly be found cheaper. In fact, I already found it cheaper. 
Shop 2 are selling it for 22 quid. The game's going to take around 30 hours to complete. What I really love about getting these definitive editions as my first playthrough for the game is that you get the complete experience. You aren't waiting for that DLC to drop, you get it all in one package. The full version if you will. This is no exception, including the Abysmal Forge, the Demon Lord, Leliol, Argyle's Tomb Story Packs, as well as some other cosmetics and gear. As is so often the case with these remasters, performance isn't quite where it should be, and as such, unless you're keen for the handheld mode, you'd be better off on another system. Still, what is here in terms of content is hefty to say the least. Value overall for me scores 15 out of 20. I'd say that I actually prefer Darksiders 2 to the first game in terms of the actual gameplay, but that won't reflect in the final score due to the issues currently in this version. It is a solid game and will of course get a patch, most likely day one knowing my luck, that addresses some of the misgivings. Death is a great character to play as and the characterization of the supporting cast and side questing are excellent. Overall though, the game scores a switch up score of 77%. Certainly not dead on arrival, oof, but this one's not quite where I'd like it. Thanks so much to all of you who watched the channel for all the support we've received. Remember we're going to be giving away that copy of Divinity 2 when we reach 50,000 subscribers. A big thank you to our patrons who support the channel every single month. If you want to join them, all the links will be down below. You can do so from as little as $1. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!